welcome to your circuit and Tabata class. I posted one of these classes a couple years ago. It's that same structure with a slight tweaking to the interval times during the circuit portion. For equipment, you are just going to need a resistance band loop. Now I have two, I'm gonna use a heavy one for our lower body work and then a medium one for the second circuit. If you only have access to one, that is absolutely fine. I would suggest you go about medium resistance. This class is broken up into two halves. First half of this class gonna have more of a lower body focus. Second half gonna have more of an upper body core focus. In each of those halves, you will have a strength circuit and then you will have a Tabata. For the strength circuit, I'm gonna give you four exercises. You do them each for 45 seconds. It's unilateral work, so we'll go through the whole circuit on the right, rest for 30 seconds, repeat it on the right, rest for 30 seconds, and then complete two sets on the left. We're pretty much doing the four exercises back to back. However, you will notice a delay on the timer. So for example, you do exercise one for 45 seconds, and then there's a five second lag before the timer starts again for exercise number two. Don't really think of it as a break. It's just to account for transition time in case we need to switch the position of the resistance band or move from standing down to the mat. For the Tabata, you are given two exercises and you alternate between them using an interval structure of 20 seconds of work 10 seconds of rest. You complete eight sets, again, going back and forth between the two. You get about a minute to recover in between each of those chunks. So you'll do circuit, rest 60 seconds. Tabata, rest 60 seconds. Circuit, rest 60. Tabata, rest 60. We finish class with a 60 second burpee challenge. I know, the excitement is palpable. And we will start this class with a thorough warm up and finish with a quick guided cool down. If that sounds overwhelming, do not worry. I'm gonna guide it through you as we go. If you enjoy this class, you can get access to more by becoming a Patreon member. On the first of every month, I drop six new workout classes. You also get access to all the workouts that have been posted in previous months. And about halfway through the month, I send out some bonus videos. So head on over to patreon.com slash Nicole Pierce to learn more about that. And with all that said, let's get to our warm up. We're gonna start down on the mat today in an all fours position. And let's just start by linking movement to breath with a little cat cow. So on an inhale, I want your gaze to shift up tailbone reaches up, find a little bit of spinal extension. And then on an exhale, you're gonna push the mat away. You're gonna round the spine up towards the ceiling. Keep moving like that. Inhale. Exhale, round. Two more. Last time, inhale, exhale, and then I want you to come to neutral, so long spine. From here, I want you to take your right elbow and you're gonna reach it up to the ceiling, finding an open rotation, and then we're gonna thread that right arm under the left. As you do, bend that left elbow, bring the side of your face to tap the mat, and then just twist it back open. So we're moving fluidly, open up, and then thread the needle coming low. One more time this side. Bring it back through tabletop and then let's do the other side. Now your left elbow lifts up towards the ceiling, open rotation, thread that left arm under the right, bending the right elbow, uh, side of the face taps down to the mat and then twist it back open. One more time. Thread it through. Come back through tabletop, neutral spine, and we're gonna come into some protraction and retraction of the shoulder blades. If you're new to those terms, you are sliding the shoulder blades in towards each other as if they could tap your spine. And then as you push the mat away, you kind of separate the shoulder blades as they slide across the back wide part of your rib cage. As you're doing this free gliding sliding motion of the scapula, you are keeping your neck long. Now we're just going to ramp up the intensity of this one. I want you to come through neutral, pause, tuck your toes under on an exhale, lift the knees up a couple inches, and from this hovering bear plank position, go back to the protraction and the retraction. So we're mobilizing through that shoulder joint, strengthening the muscles that support our shoulder joint. Give me two more. 
Last time, hips up to downward facing dog and then bend them right back to that bear plank position. Hips lift up, bring it right back down to that hover. Lift, opening up through the backs of the legs and down. One more time. And now lift those hips up, hold your downward facing dog and pedal out those heels a little bit. Now I want you to start walking your hands in towards your feet, come into a forward fold position and then unlock through the knees. And I want you to slide your hands up your shins, coming into a long neutral spine position. Hands can come to heart center and from here we're gonna go into a hip hinge. So you bring your torso upright as you squeeze your glutes and then you slide those hips back as you hinge forward, bringing it up and lowering down. So we really wanna focus on opening up and mobilizing through the backside of the legs because we're gonna do a lot of work for the posterior side of our lower body in our first circuit. Now, next time down, I want you to hold the hinge. And in this position, it's just going to be a little bend of the knees and then you are going to press but don't lock. Bend the knees, press but don't lock, keeping that hinge forward with the torso. As the knees bend, it's okay if your torso lifts up a little bit, kind of like you're coming into a semi-squat position. Ground down through the feet, couple more. Last time. And then I want you to hold the bend of the knees. I'm just gonna turn to face towards you. Now, I don't want you super low in the squat, okay? You can bring your torso up a little bit. We're gonna take our right leg and we are going to externally rotate it so the toes point out to the side and then bring it back to face forward. Now I want you to take it internal rotation and forward. Keep that going, same side, external, forward, internal, forward. So we're mobilizing through the hip joint. Now don't force it, okay? I don't have a ton of internal rotation. The movement doesn't have to be huge. Make sure you are focusing on the hip, okay? The movement is coming from the hip. Your foot is just following. So hip, knee, foot, pointing in the same direction. One more time, internal, forward, and we're just gonna take it over to the left. So external, forward, internal, forward, just pivoting on that heel, keep that going. Out, forward, in, and forward. Again, that turnout is coming from the hip joint. So don't make it bigger than it needs to be, okay? You're working within your personal range of motion. One more time, internal, forward. And now from here, I want you to fold forward. Again, I'm gonna turn to the side. Walk your hands out into a plank position. We're gonna take our right foot. You're gonna step it to the outside of the right hand. You're gonna twist open, right arm to the ceiling. Bring your right hand down. Step your right foot back, same thing, other side. Left foot steps forward, left arm reaches up. Left arm to the mat, step your left foot back. Walk your hands back. You're gonna roll up slowly to stand and you're going to give me some jumping jacks. Now, if you don't want to jump just yet, you can step to the side, okay? So this is the ending part of our warm up. We wanna bring that heart rate up a little bit and mixing in some mobility. Now we're gonna do that same sequence again. On my count, you're gonna roll down, you're gonna inchworm out to plank in four, three, two, one. All right, roll, start to nod your chin. Fold forward, walk your hands out to a plank position. Right foot, right arm, right hand, right foot, left side, steps forward, twist it open, close it down, step it back. Hands walk in towards your feet. Roll up to standing, second round of jumping jacks. We're gonna go through that just one more time. We roll down in four, three, two, one. Roll down vertebrae by vertebrae, hands to the mat. Walk yourself out into your plank. Right foot, right arm, right arm right foot, left foot, left arm, left arm, left foot. Walk your hands in towards your feet. 
Roll it up to stand. One more round of jumping jacks. We're going to get to our first circuit up next. Lower body will be the focus in four, three, two, one. Warm up done. I'm going to use my heavy band for the circuit, but of course use whatever works for you. We're going to have the band under one foot. You're going to grab it in both hands. First two exercises are deadlift variations. Exercise one, staggered deadlift. Stay really light through that back foot. There's barely any weight in it. Second exercise, we release that back leg through the from the floor. So it's a deadlift and then it's two big split lunge pulses. Pulse is probably not the right word because they're big, okay? Two split lunges, down, up, down, up. We then release the band and we're coming into a split lunge to a low squat. Step forward and back. You're trying to stay low the whole time, but if you need to modify when you step forward into that squat, just stand and then sink right back down into it. We then come down to the mat. It's a donkey kick pulse. We swivel open and then it's a hydrant pulse. And just to show you from a different angle, watch what's going on. So pulse with my hips and thigh bone pointing straight to the floor. And then we open up so the thigh bone is pointing to the side of the room and it's a little pulse out turned. Those are your four exercises, 45 seconds a piece. We're gonna repeat it twice on the right, twice on the left. So the band is under my right foot. My left toes are staggered behind me. I square my hips. Both hands are gonna grip that band and we're gonna start with our staggered deadlift. So your hips slide back. You're staying open through the chest though. Don't round your shoulders. And then you squeeze into the right butt cheek as you come to the top. You're really grounding down through that right foot. And yes, the right knee is going to bend, but it's not a knee bend that initiates the movement. It's the hip hinge, okay? So think hips back, knee bends a little bit as a result, but that is not the focus. Okay, now we're gonna release that left foot from the floor. The leg is nice and straight. You tilt forward, your body's kind of like a seesaw. You come up, the left toes lightly land, and then we're gonna do two split lunge pulses down, press it up. Now when you're doing this, make sure the right knee is staying over the right heel. It is not jutting out over the toes. One deadlift hinge, two split lunge pulses. There's barely any weight in my left foot. I'm really sending the hips back on that split lunge pulse, again, so that my right knee does not jut out in front of the toes. When you do this deadlift hinge, try to keep your hips level to the floor, so you might need to pull that left hip down a bit. Also, don't lock out your right knee. All right, now ditch the band, and we're gonna do step forward into a low squat, step that left foot back into a split lunge, low squat, Split lunge, your right foot is grounded. Back, forward. With your torso, you're hinging forward so that the shoulders are staying over that front knee. By leaning forward like this, we keep the focus in the back side of the leg, the hamstrings and glutes. Now we're leaning forward, but we're not rounding forward. So again, broadness across the collarbones. We'll come to the mat next. Okay, we come down to the mat. You're gonna lift your right knee up. From here, it's a pulse donkey kick. You open up through that right hip and it's a little pulse open. Now, I shouldn't even say you open up through the hip. You just open up through the thigh bone, okay? So it's so small. Pulse it up, externally rotate, little pulse open. The lift is coming from your butt, not your low back, okay? So when you pulse up, I don't want your low back to sink to the floor. We need to engage the abdominals. You need to ground down through your hands. Your shoulders are working. Push the mat away. Donkey kick pulse, hydrant pulse. It is small, but woo, I'm feeling it. Rest. 
Okay, you have 30 seconds to rest. We're gonna do that same sequence and we're gonna stay on the right side. Now, why are we staying on the right side? Because we're only completing two sets, I do want us to reach that point of fatigue. So we're just going straight through. Band goes under your right foot. You're gonna grab it in both hands, square your hips. Left toes are planted behind you lightly. And we have that staggered deadlift. Hips slide back, drive the hips forward. So hopefully by this point in the circuit, you are feeling your right side glutes really talking to you. Hips back, hips forward. Check in, are you dumping a lot of weight into that back foot? If you are, get a little lighter through it. Now straighten out that back left leg. One full deadlift, leg lifts up. Bring it up to the point where the left toes plant on the floor, two split lunge pulses. So you are bending into that right leg, straightening through the right leg, bending into that right knee without letting it jut forward, press it up, go into your next deadlift. So one deadlift, two of those split lunges. When you do the split lunge, it's still hips back, okay? And you wanna keep that hinge forward with your torso, so shoulders stacked over this front knee. Whew, losing my balance. It's not a race. I care about form over how many reps you get in. Whoo, okay. Now ditch that band, right foot stays planted. Split lunge, squat. Split lunge, squat. You're trying to stay low, but if you need to modify, stand up out of the squat and then sink right back down. Whew. Whew. Hello, right side glutes. <laughs> Almost there, we have just one more exercise to get through on this side. All right, come down to the mat. This one is small and precise. Lift your right leg up, it's bent at 90. Foot is flexed. One pulse in the donkey kick. Spiral the thigh bone open in the hip joint. Pulse it with that external rotation. Donkey kick pulse, hydrant pulse. So when you open up into that hydrant, you are not stacking your hip on top of the bottom one, okay? It's just the thigh bone rotating in the hip joint. <sighs> Make sure you're not dumping weight into your outer left hip. So really ground down through that right hand. Woo, and rest. Okay, 30 seconds here. We're gonna move on to the left leg. Do that same thing twice on the left. Okay, band is gonna go under your left foot. Right foot is now staggered behind you. Just have the toes down, square your hips, open through the chest, and we're gonna do that staggered deadlift. Hips slide back, hips come forward. As your hips come forward, you're making a fist with the left side butt cheek as you engage your abdominals. Because what I don't want to happen is I don't want your hips to come forward and then you hyperextend into the low back, okay? So picture you're coming up into a vertical plank.
All right, now straighten out that back right leg, release it from the floor. You hinge forward, body's like a seesaw. You come up, those back toes land. Give me two of those split lunges down and up. Bend the left knee, but don't jut it forward. So you gotta slide the hips back, up. One deadlift. Go slow. Balance is important. And, then, and now check in on your back right foot. Not a lot of weight in it at all. It's there for balance. When you do this deadlift, don't lock out through your left knee, okay? It's unlocked, woo, as I wobble around. And your hips are square to the mat. Okay, we're gonna release that band. We're in our split lunge. We step forward into our squat. Left foot stays planted, right foot is moving. Back to the split lunge, forward to the low squat. Now tune in with that left foot, you're grounding down through it. So the big toe is down. We have a tendency to want to lift those toes up. Don't do it. We want to connect to our glutes as effectively as possible. Woo, come down to the mat. Left knee is bent, left knee is lifted. Start level, donkey, kick, pulse. Spiral that left thigh open, hydrant pulse. It's so small. Tight spiral, but without opening up through that left hip. So the left hip does not stack on top of the right. It stays pointing down towards your mat. Spine is long and neutral. And we're not sinking into our shoulders. So really press your fingertips into the mat. Oh, and 30 seconds to rest. Okay, just one final time through this circuit and then we'll move on. Hopefully your glutes are talking to you a little bit. Mine certainly are. Oof. Left foot is under the band, right foot is staggered a little behind. Staggered deadlift to start. So the movement is initiated by that hip hinge back and forward. Yes, the left knee will bend a little bit, but it is not a squat, it is not the focus. It's that hip hinge. I'm noticing I'm shifting a lot of weight into that back right foot, so I'm just gonna come all the way up onto my toes. Now make sure your feet are about hips distance apart so you're not walking on a tightrope here. All right, that'll help with balance. Okay, coming into that second deadlift variation, back right leg is long and straight. It comes off the mat as you tilt forward. As you come up, the right foot plants lightly. Bend into that left knee, split lunge down and up, down and up. Second time you come up, go into your next deadlift. Ground down through that left foot, but don't collapse into the arch. Keep your hinge forward. The circuit is all about the posterior chain. Pull your right hip down in line with the left. Okay, now we ditch that band. You're in your low split lunge and then your low squat. Second to last exercise in this circuit. Keep it up. 
Now, if you look down at your left foot, you should be able to see the toes. The knee is not eclipsing it. That left knee is staying pretty much stacked right over your ankle. Try to stay low if you can. We're almost there. One exercise to go after this. All right, come down to the mat. You're in that tabletop position. Left knee is bent and lifted. Donkey kick, pulse. Externally rotate that thigh bone. Hydrant, pulse. It's small and it is precise. Now, if you're feeling this a lot in your low back, I want you to try exhaling as you pulse up just to help you maintain that connection to your abdominal wall. Don't shift weight into that outer right hip, although the right side is supporting you. So really ground down through that left hand. and rest. Okay, you have about a minute to recover while I show you the two exercises in our Tabata. We're not going to use the bands for our Tabata superset. First exercise is going to be a donkey kick. So we just did a ton for the back of the legs. This is more for the front. We're going to kind of hit our quads on this one. To modify, you can be in a bare plank position and you can just pulse the hips up and then tap the knees down like so. Second exercise is going to be a 180 squat jump. So you're basically just flipping around, face forward, face back, always turning over the opposite shoulder. To modify that one, you have two options. You could take out the twist and just do a regular squat jump, or you could just do an air squat down and up to eliminate the jump. Okay, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, eight rounds. So you're gonna do each exercise four times. Where's my timer? There we go. We will start with those donkey kicks. Hands are under shoulders, knees under hips. You're gonna tuck your toes under, press the ground away in that hovering position. We'll kick our heels in towards our bum. come up to standing, 180 squat jumps. Now you'll notice I'm coming to touch the floor. Don't worry if your hand actually touches the mat. You don't even have to reach for it if you don't want to. I should really do this one facing the side so I'm not pressing my butt in your face. <laughs> Next round. Oh, rest. Okay, first set done. Make our way back down to the mat, donkey kicks. Well, let's go. Now I showed you that you can modify by just tapping the knees down and lifting them up. An intermediate modification would be to just do little hops. Hop, pop, like that. Rest. Come up to stand. Whew. Let's go. Modifications for this one, like I showed you, you could do regular jump squats or power squats. Rest. All right, halfway through, let's go. Down to the mat. Let's go. So this isn't just a quad exercise, it's a shoulder exercise. So I need all 10 fingertips pressing into the mat. Don't let your shoulder blades sink in, okay? Oh, oh rest. Ooh. Three more pushes to go.
Now, if you are bringing a hand to touch the mat on this one, it's touching the mat because you're getting low through your legs and you're hinging through the upper body. You're not touching the mat because you're hunching forward, okay? So I need this broadness across the collarbones. Oh, rest. One final set. If you have to pause, try to pause in the hover, okay, like this. Last time you're gonna see this one. Oh. Oh, rest. Oh, one more. I got to face forward and stick my butt in your face. I'm hitting my couch. Final 20. <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh my God, was I struggling at the end there. Whew. I'm gonna drop down to my medium band for this circuit. First up, we have a windmill. The band will be under one foot and we'll be focused on the top side body obliques, bringing us back up to the top. Next, keeping that band under the foot, opposite hand will grab it, and we have a cross body row in that hinge forward position. From there, we bring the band into both hands. We are going to do a lateral extension out to the side, kind of hitting biceps, and then we'll bring that non-target side up to our shoulder, we'll hinge forward, and we'll go into some tricep work. For the tricep work, it's one full range kickback, and then two little pulses where it's just kind of a bend stretch, bend, stretch. All right, so you are going to mirror me in this one. The band is gonna go under your left foot. Left hand will grab it. You might even wanna choke up on, a little bit on it if it doesn't feel tight enough. Your feet make a 90 degree angle for the windmill and you have a pretty wide stance. Top right arm is gonna reach up towards the ceiling. And you're gonna kinda of pop that hip to the right. You lower down. And then you're using the top side right obliques to bring yourself up to the top. So you can unlock through your front leg. You can even give me a little bend to that knee, but your right leg is staying pretty straight. Inhale as you lower, exhale, really drag yourself up to the top, engaging through the side body. Okay, now right hand is gonna grab the band. It stays under your left foot. Both feet point forward. From here, it is a cross body row. You are in a hinged forward kind of deadlift position. So you are pulling that right elbow up and to the right. So just to show you a different angle from the side. Now I want you to think of initiating this movement with your back not your elbow, okay? So you retract the shoulder blade, then the elbow moves. Okay, now both hands have the band. The right palm faces forward and you extend it out to the side and back in. Your left hand is the anchor. Now I have my left hand at my right hip. If that feels too light, you can just move it over to the side and do it from there. Now in this upright position, let's make sure our knees aren't totally locked out and let's make sure we're maintaining a neutral pelvis. So I don't want you sinking into your low back. Now, just thinking about our transition into the final exercise, right now, my left hand is at my hip. I'm gonna move that left hand up to my right shoulder for the tricep work. 
Okay, so up to the shoulder, palm is gonna face in towards you. It's a kick back and then two little bend and stretches. One kick back, two bend stretches. If it feels more comfortable for your elbow and your wrist to have your palm facing behind you, that is an option too. Stay really open across your collarbones. I don't want that right shoulder to roll forward. Oh, and 30 seconds to rest. Okay, we're gonna do that whole thing staying on the right side. So the band is gonna go under your left foot and the left foot points to the left, right foot points forward for that windmill. Choke up on the band if you need to. Right arm up to the ceiling. So right hip slides to the right, left hand kind of goes down the inside of that left leg. Exhale, drag yourself up to the top. Really think about what muscles are doing the work. So I want you to think of starting your exhale. As you start to exhale, the ribs move in and down. Side body drags you to the top. If you can co really connect to your abdominals with your breathing on this one, you don't need a ton of weight to really feel it. Right hand will grab the band next. Keep it under your left foot, but we'll point the toes forward. Okay, so come into that hinge position. Now right hand has the band and it is that cross body row. Our torso is long, our chest is open. We're reaching our tailbone back. So we're leaning forward, yes, but we're not just sinking into our low back. Is our back working? Yes but we don't want pain here. So we gotta maintain the connection to our abdominals. And again, let's really think about what's initiating this movement. It's that retraction of the shoulder blade, then the elbow pulls. So that's why we did that retraction, protraction in the warm up. Everything we do in the warm up is on purpose. Okay, left hand grabs the band, left hand to right wrist, or right hip, sorry, we have that lateral extension. So again, you're mirroring me, the right arm extends out, the fist is coming up to about shoulder height. Bend it back in. Now we're really open across the chest here, but without flaring out through our ribs. It all comes back to connecting to our abdominals. Now, last few seconds, can you add a little pulse for me? Extend out, give me a little pulse when it's wide, and then bring it in. If you wanna really advance it, you can hold and just do the pulse. Okay, now that opposite left hand slides up to the left shoulder. Right palm faces in, it's a tricep kickback. Two, bend stretches, bring it in. I'm just gonna switch my grip real quick. Now try not to lock out through the elbow completely. And admittedly, sometimes it looks like I'm locking out my elbow. I'm a little hyperextended through my elbow joint, so I'm doing my best to not <laughs> do that. But even when you press back, it's an unlock of the joint. We wanna keep the work in the musculature. Uh, and rest. Okay, we're gonna do those same, those same four moves. There we go, can't talk. We'll just switch it over to the left side. So now the band is gonna go under your right foot. Right toes point to the right, left toes point forward, wide stance, choke up on the band if you need to. Left arm will reach up towards the ceiling. 
Ooh, not yet. Windmill's coming up. <laughs> All right. We slide that right hand kind of down the inside of our right thigh. Exhale, use the left side obliques to bring yourself up to the top. So think exhale first, breath first, movement second. That's just gonna help you connect to your abs. Coming up, you'll keep the band under that right foot, but you'll point the toes forward. We have that cross body row and that kind of hinged forward position. All right, let's go. All 10 toes point forward, left hand grabs the band, row across. So our core is still working in this. It's working to hold us still. So while the elbow pulls to the side, we don't let ourselves rotate open. So it's working as a stabilizer instead of a mover here. Again, trying to connect to that mid back area. So think shoulder blade, then elbow. Grab the band in your right hand as well. Left palm points forward, lateral extension, pressing it out to the side, and then the elbow pulls in. If you need more weight on the band, then your right hand can move to the right hip. Now your arm is going out wide to the side, yes, but you should be able to see it in your peripheral vision. If you go too far back, you're gonna flare open through the ribs. This right hand will move up to the shoulder instead of that left hip as we go into the tricep kickbacks with those pulses up next. Thinking about speedy transitions. You don't wanna take more than those five seconds. Okay, move the hand up to your shoulder, hinge forward, palm faces in, tricep kickback, two bend presses, and then bring it in. Again, if you would rather do this with your palm facing behind you instead of in towards your body, that is fine, but try to stick with the same rotation that you did on the first side. These are controlled pulses, so try not to come into a locked elbow. And 30 seconds to rest. Okay, we're gonna go through this just one more time and we move into our Tabata. All right, band under the right foot, right toes point to the right, left toes point forward, windmill to start. Hip slides towards the left. Cross body row will come up next. Keep the band under the foot. All right, point both feet forward. Left hand grabs the band. We're in a hinged position, but we are not collapsing through that upper body. So think long neutral spine, reaching your tailbone back. 
Now, sometimes when we do any sort of row exercise, as we row, we jut the neck forward so that our head is kind of rocking forward and back. I don't want that. I want you to think of keeping your neck in that same long neutral position throughout the whole range of motion. All right, you got that lateral extension. Right hand has the band, now it's anchoring you. Left palm faces forward, left thumb up. You press that band out to the side, it comes to about shoulder height, and then you bring it back in. You are making sure your legs are not completely locked out. Neutral pelvis. If you add it in the pulse on the first side, let's add it in. You extend out, little pulse, and then bring it in. Little pulse, bring it in. If you took that really advanced version and just pulsed it out to finish, feel free to do that these last few seconds. Your right anchoring hand will move up to the shoulder, hinge it forward, tricep kickbacks with two little pulses. Now notice what is happening to your left shoulder as you kick back, is it dumping forward? I don't want that. So you need to think really open across the chest. Almost there. Oh, and recover. Okay, you have about a minute. I'm gonna show you the two exercises we'll be doing in our final Tabata. No bands are needed for this final Tabata superset. Exercise one is going to be a push-up. I want you to get in several reps during the 20 seconds, so I'm going to do them from my knees. If you have a really strong push-up though, I want you to do them from your feet. Second exercise, cross body mountain climbers. To modify these, just slow them down. So you would be in your plank position, and you would just tap one knee across to the opposite elbow, then the next. If you need to modify further, you can be in a bare plank position and you can just bring opposite hand to tap opposite knee, like so. All right, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, eight rounds. So we're gonna alternate between those two. All right, push-ups up first. Ground down through your hands, they're stacked under your shoulders. Elbows are gonna go back at a 45 degree angle. Rest. All right, cross body mountain climbers, just like a regular mountain climber, but knee goes across towards opposite elbow. Let's go. And rest. Whew. If you'd rather do regular mountain climbers, running the knees forward, if that's more comfortable for your hips, feel free to. All right, push-ups coming up. Now, just because the focus might be our arms, our arms are the things moving, your legs are active, so you need to squeeze your glutes and squeeze your quads. Inhale as you lower, exhale as you press up and away. Rest. Cross body mountain climbers coming up. Well, let's go. Make sure your head isn't hanging heavy, okay? 
long neck. Rest. Halfway there. Let's go. Now, as you do these push-ups, bring your hips with you, okay? And what I mean by that is I don't want you just dipping your head down, okay? Hips go with you. Rest. If your wrists are starting to bother you, instead of doing the mountain climbers in a high plank, just hold a forearm plank position for me, or you could do forearm plank jacks. Rest. Oh, my dog's crying. What pickles? I got one more set to go. One more set. Push ups. <laughs> Oh, here she comes. Are you helping me? <laughs> oh, rest. Okay. One last round of mountain climbers. Let's do it. 20 seconds. If you need to slow it down, slow it down, but try to stay in some version of a plank right till the end. And done. Oh, okay. Now we end every circuit and Tabata class with a 60 second burpee challenge. You can do any version of burpees you want. I know we were just doing push-ups, so if you don't want to add in the push-up at the bottom, you could always just jump to plank. You're going all out for 60 seconds, and I want you to count your reps, see how many you get in, so that next time you do this workout or one of the other circuit and Tabata classes, you can try to match or beat your number. I'm gonna be doing chest to floor burpees, so I'm gonna lower my chest to the mat and then press up. All right, 60 seconds on the clock. This is where we finish, and then we get to cool down, okay? I'm not gonna talk through this because I'm gonna be counting myself. I'll let you know how many reps I get in. Any version of burpee you want. Let's go. Okay, I got in 13 that time. Whew. Take a few breaths. Let your heart rate come down a little bit. Awesome work with that. I'll guide you through a quick cool down. Let's actually grab one of our resistance band loops for this cool down. When you're ready, we're gonna come to lay all the way down on the mat. I want you to put the band around your right foot. You can keep your leg you can stretch it out long on the mat. And from here, I just want a little bend and press through that right knee. So a little active, active opening through the back side of the legs. In that first circuit, we did a lot for the posterior side of the lower body. So I wanna make sure that we give ample recovery attention to our hamstrings and glutes. Okay, now just hold the legs straight when you're ready. 
and maybe you pull it in a little closer to your face. Be careful though, I don't want that band to slip off your foot. If you feel like it's going to slightly point your foot a little bit. Now you're gonna take that right leg, still holding onto the band for support, and you're just gonna bring it across your body slightly to the left. Hopefully you feel this in that outer hip, outer thigh region. I do not need to move it very far across my midline to feel it. Good, bring it back to center when you're ready. Bend the knee, take the band off, and I want you to cross that right ankle over the left thigh, and you can weave your hands around the left thigh, hold everything tight this area, you might get a good enough stretch just keeping that left foot planted on the floor. I'm gonna bring these stretches along. So grab that band. This time left foot is gonna go in the loop. Maybe you keep your right knee bent or maybe you straighten out. Start with just a little bend and press. <sighs> Left knee bends, press it away. If you feel like you are in danger of that band slipping off your foot and whacking you in the face, just do this without the band or you could use something like a yoga strap or a belt. When you're ready, just hold that leg straight, maybe pull it a smidgen closer to your face. I'm really tight to the backs of my legs, so this is, this is as far as I go. <laughs> when you're ready, we're gonna bring that left leg across our body towards the right. You don't need to go very far, okay? Try not to let that left hip lift off of the mat. So we're keeping both hips down. It's just that little outer stretch. If you heard that big loud buzz, that was just an airplane flying over my parents' house. I've turned their sunroom into my YouTube studio this summer. I'm sure they're pumped. Bring the leg back into center, bend the knee, carefully take that band off, we're done with it. And let's take that figure four across, left ankle over right thigh, pull the whole shape in towards you. You can kind of use your left elbow to push that left thigh away as well. When you're ready, hug both of your knees in. And I just want you to start rocking and rolling up and down the spine a little bit until you eventually come up to a comfortable seated position. I'm gonna go cross-legged if you'd rather kneel or sit on a block or a pillow, totally up to you. Then now bringing the left fingertips to tent on the mat, I want you to take your right arm, reach it up, and we're gonna find a side body stretch. And then from this side body or side bend position, I want you to exhale and rotate your chest towards the floor. Ooh, that should feel really nice. And then inhale, open up a little bit, but staying in the slight side bend, using the left fingertips to support you. One more like that, exhale, rotate down. Inhale, spiral up. Come through the side bend, bring yourself up and let's go over to the other side. Left arm up, start with your side bend. On an exhale, rotate down. Inhale, rotate up. Twice more. Last time. Come back into the side bend, bring yourself up to the top and let's just finish with two deep breaths together. Inhale, arms are gonna sweep up overhead. Exhale, release. Once more, inhale up overhead. Exhale, release. Awesome job. Hope you loved that class. If you did, remember you can get access to more by becoming a Patreon member. All information is at the website here and linked to below. Something to keep in mind if you are doing this on August 31st. 
I would wait until tomorrow, September 1st, to sign up for Patreon because you are charged upon signing up and then again on the first of every month. So I don't want you to get that double charge just for one day of August. So wait till September 1st. All right, have a good one.